top of the morning to you and welcome to Kind of Funny Games Daily for Friday, <laughs> September 29th, 2017. I'm one of your hosts, Greg Miller, alongside, for the last time, as an official co-host, my Irish cream, Danny O'Dwyer. Konosatatu Makara. There, there it is. Okay. I don't know. What <laughs> How are, are you, my friend? I'm good. How are you? It's good uh, to see you. I'm good. I'm good. You Sad ready? to be going. Yeah. Um... Uh, honored to be, I mean, it's just like I'm back home. If you're an audio listener, <laughs> we have decked ourselves out. I have a new green shirt. There's a pot of gold, green hats, green cups. Andy Cortez went and redid the kind of funny Games Daily background to be all Irish sure. things. Fighting Irish, Boston yeah. Celtics. Is yeah. that Boston Celtics? Is that what that is? I forget. No, that, that's Fight Notre Dame. No, Notre, Notre Dame. Dame. Sorry, Irish. wrong yeah, one. Yeah. And then okay. this is just the luck of the Irish. Oh, uh, great. Movie. A I Disney used Channel the, original uh, movie. Cla- yeah. One of our, the, our most popular movies that's in Ireland. chief <laughs> export of yeah. Ireland, I do believe. It's this and Darby O'Gill in the Little People are, uh, yeah. I did love Darby O'Gill and Little People. It's pretty up. good. What's the next one? I haven't There's watched all these. Okay. I know there's a Bailey's bottle that comes in at some point, just to be heads up on that. <laughs> uh, of course, well, you are leaving us, Danny. You are going to Maryland. I am. I'm going to, I'm, I'm leaving Oaktown, which is why I'm wearing my Amari Cooper uh, shirt. Uh, one last time. Uh, one to go last time. To the East Coast. Uh, yeah. So I guess I'll be a Ravens fan. <laughs> you can't do that. Don't do no, that. That's don't not do how that. you are. You're, no. you're a Raiders fan. You're a Raiders fan. Right? Yeah. That's the thing. I was talking to someone about it and they were like, you know what? It doesn't matter where you move. Yeah. Raiders fans are everywhere. Sure. Raiders fans are like the, core, sure. the kind of like Definitely. dispersed among the world, right? Like that's just the way. I mean, that's what Oakland fans are going to be like in three years time or yeah. two years time when yeah, they go to yeah. Vegas. So <laughs> uh, yeah, but. But, uh, our trucks arrived already today, so uh, we're packing up. We're moving to Maryland on Tuesday. Wow. And then I'm setting up Noclip's new studio in, in our place in, in Maryland. So I'm glad you exciting. didn't have everything come to a head at once. You know what I mean? <laughs> of like, hey, you're going to move, you can do this. You're also launching the next Noclip next week, Monday. Yeah, the Witcher stuff starting on Monday. Yeah. Six episodes, yeah. 25 minutes each. Damn, dude. Uh, yeah, so check those out. Almost three hours of Witcher stuff. Uh, but it feels... It feels good as well to actually. I'm trying to think of it positively. Is that like in two weeks' time, yeah. I'll have our biggest project out, and it'll give me actually a little bit of breathing space to worry about furniture and setting sure. up the studio your and life, all that stuff. Your right. personal life, yeah. all that stuff. Yeah, uh, yeah. So equal parts excited, uh, sad to be leaving, of course. Uh, all my friends and yeah. and I was so privileged to to join you on this, uh, man. I fucking like. I was I was still in Ireland, man, when you were doing your thing on IGN. Like to to be able to like come over here and work with you, uh, especially in the post game spot IGN sure. stuff was like an absolute honor so thank you so much dude for the honor's been all here. mine thank you so much for doing this show with me it's been great you're an honorary Irish person no thank you hey look at that <laughs> my mom Jamie Kennedy's excited to hear that uh, so yeah go support Danny of course support no clip patreon.com slash Danny O'Dwyer keep him employed over there employed. making more cool videos <laughs> and stuff. also heads up in housekeeping Kevin's getting married tomorrow so everybody tweet at kind of funny Kevin Woo. Tell him what up. I mean, I'm getting all this. Yeah. All I'm doing is fucking moving house. Yeah. He's getting married. <laughs> all I did was quit. Get married. <laughs> yeah, is getting married awesome? Oh, yeah. Being married is rad. You yeah. love it. I love it. Love yeah, it. it's yeah. great. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Oh, my gosh. It's awesome. I can't. Super good. Yeah, I'm super excited for that tomorrow. Enjoy, we'll Kevin. Look for a whole bunch of social media on that, so we'll do that. But right now, of course, this is Kind of Funny Games Daily. Each and every weekday on a variety of platforms, we run you through the nerdy video game news you need to know about before... Looking in, getting in there. We get in there, we answer your questions, we give you perspective, we all have a good time. Remember, you can watch the show live as we record it at twitch.tv slash kindoffunnygames, but you can't interact with us there. Instead, you'd have to go to kindoffunny.com slash you're wrong. Tell us what we get wrong as we get it wrong so that everybody who listens later on podcast services around the globe or watches on youtube.com slash kindoffunnygames gets the record set straight. Remember, if you want to be part of the show and ask a question, kindoffunny.com slash kfgd. For now, let's begin the show with what is, and forever will be, The Roper Report. (laughs) Time for some news! That's me filling, because I... Four items on The Roper Report. A baker's dozen. You took a big gasp, Joey, like you were going to yell, and then it was still, it was just very soft-spoken. I appreciate that. To be fair, we were trying to figure out how to say that in... Gaelic or oh. in Irish or really? Yeah, a baker's and, dozen. Yeah, and they didn't have the option for me to play just the audio of someone saying it. Yeah, so I, we were f- trying to figure that out. That's a tough one. I yeah, you fake Irish person. I'm trying to think know. of. I mean, what the thirteen in Irish? Hendo tree car cuig she shocked octne de. I can't. What the fuck is eleven? I can't even remember. <laughs> That's really bad. That's America. That's, that's, that's America that's, working on you. That's been out of the country for eight years. All I'm so sorry. I'm getting to you. Baker's dozen. Somebody put it into your wrong. How do you say number one? A hand. 
a haim. <laughs> Nintendo <laughs> is going to stop supporting the Wii Shopping Channel in 2019. Uh, the Wii Shopping Channel. Yeah, pour out this stuff. The Wii Shopping Channel started, of course, in December 2006, but you won't be able to add points after March 27th, 2018. Mm. Then WiiWare Virtual Console purchases end incomplete. The whole thing gets shut down on January 31st, 2019. They will refund you unused Wii points at some some point somehow. They're like very in their thing. It's coming from. It was translated off the Japanese website. I found it through Gaff. Uh, Gaff also adds that uh, this also affects backwards compatible uh, games for Wii U, and then mm-hmm. you can re-download any already bought software as well as the Wii slash uh, Wii U data transfer will stay online for right. the time being, but will also shut down at an undetermined date. So they don't have a date for that, and then they don't have right now the ins and outs of how these unused Wii points are going to get right. funneled back to you, but there is a refund policy. Apparently. And we're talking end of January 2019, it yeah, says. So on time. T- yeah, you got a bit of time to do this. Right. Good that they're getting ahead of it. Yeah, um, 100%. I mean, sad in a way that, like, one of the things everyone thought about the Wii U and, you know, it was that stuff could get transferred over. You, you had to pay to get a lot of them transferred over onto the new yeah. system. And you were hoping that maybe when they did the Switch eShop that there would be some sort of carryover there. Obviously, Still that hasn't be, happened. Yeah, see when the Wii eShop comes around. Who knows right. what's going to happen? Uh, so sad. Uh, the eShop was cool. Like yeah. it was the first time Nintendo had really given a go at trying to like sell their old stuff. Yeah, no, the um, eShop was awesome. I and as someone that was who, one I didn't big... grow up playing those games, yep. so it was like I got access to all those games, man. I never got to do them. It man. was very bizarre when uh, Wii was launching against PlayStation Three and Xbox Three Hundred and Sixty. Already been in the market a year, right? And I didn't own an Xbox Three Hundred and Sixty, and I wasn't buying a PS Three launch. I was buying a Wii because right. it was a standard definition game console. I didn't have an HD TV, and it was the <laughs> fact of like I can download all their old games. I yeah. didn't have an NES growing up. I had a super NES I used just for Super Mario World. Like, right. I missed tons and tons of games. Like, yeah, I'd love to jump back in and try to learn. Yeah, and they were priced relatively well. Like, yeah. I, I remember spending, like, three euro on stuff and being like, yeah, that's fine. Well, like, it's I interesting, mean, too, just, like, then when they're like, oh, yeah, we'll, we'll refund you the Wii points. I'm like, oh, right. We points, points were a thing. It wasn't going, just hey, yeah. here's the here's the fucking money you want to spend. Going into, I mean, everyone like Microsoft, Microsoft as well, had like, points. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Like going I think in. PlayStation at one point was the only one using real money, right? <laughs> Kindofun.com <laughs> slash Yoronto. I wonder if there's there must be some edge case somewhere of someone who's sitting on like like a grand. Oh, so many like Wii points. Wii points, yeah, hundred percent. Right? And it's probably like accrued, yeah, like in value or yeah. something. Or maybe gone the other way. I'm not an economist. I don't know. Uh, uh, yeah, I, I'm. It, what's the thing is like. It's going to have to be an opt-in program, right? Because I'm sure I have a couple bucks in Wii points in right. my Wii that I, you know, like you buy something at a discount, you got this, and then there's just this... Like a check in the mail. It's exactly. going to arrive from Reggie. going to show up all of a sudden. Like, you know, here's your dollar and 50 cents. Well, so you if you have a catalog, like, get on it maybe. Yeah. You've got a bit of time, set a reminder, uh, get that stuff downloaded. Well, it's in interesting, case. too, the longevity of this, right? That it's it mm. launches in 2006, closing out in 2019. When we yeah. just had the, the... You weren't on the show yesterday, but we just covered the Gravity Rush 2 taking their online services off a year after launch. Right. Like in January, they're just going to cut all really? that. Yeah, cut all that functionality. God, how much much stuff be costing them? That they're and that's feeling the question, like they have right? To, yeah. yeah, they feel like that the upkeep or the worry about it is too much. Yeah. yeah. Yeah, I mean, people were up in arms and EA did that a couple of years back to yeah. most of their multiplayer stuff. Or get well, GameSpy rather did it and it affected EA and EA actually ended up chipping in some money to put a lot of that stuff back up. Uh, yeah, I know, 13 years. I, I can't imagine anyone's bought, like most people have bought anything on the eShop in quite a while. Yeah. I'm sure there's a bunch I, of know, diehard I, well, Wii U most fans. Sure, but there's definitely people who must be using their Wii a lot still, yeah. right? I mean, and the install base, that's got to be somebody's only system still. Right, and if the Wii U, if you still own the Wii U right now, there's not that many pieces of disc-based software coming out. Sure. So probably maybe the only place you can buy stuff is Virtual Console in the yeah, shop. Yeah. Um, yeah, but I, I mean, again, we're talking 2019, which sounds like some far-flung... Well, I mean, the Wii U's fine, because this is, well, except for backwards compatible. It's like the Sorry, Wii games. Yeah. I just want to make sure we're clear, because we're using interchangeable stuff yeah. here. The Wii shopping channel. Mm. But that fa- affects the games that were backwards compatible with Wii U. And you could go into that Wii U mode to go back into stupid Wii U Wii mode. I I've like hate erased the Wii, U. the Wii U from my memory. Dude, I was packing should. stuff up and I had it still hooked up to the television. I forgot. It was like behind the Mine TV. Mine was in the closet forever and I was so happy about it. And then I brought right. it here, plugged it in because it was like, oh, Smash. We've played Dude, no Smash. And if you pick one of those things up, because I picked up my Vita, which yeah. I hadn't seen in a while. Yeah. And I was like, oh, that still looks all right. Yeah. And like I found my old PSP and I was like, yeah, like looks fine. And I found <laughs> the Wii U tablet. Like that that is aged so bad. Stupid oh my toy. god, it's so bad. Especially when light of the switch. Oh yeah. But the other the Sony stuff looked fine. It was like, yeah. oh I remember that. Yeah. Yeah, well like, that's always the weird thing of like, especially when I was when the switch hit and I played that for like a few months like solid. <laughs> yeah. And then I picked up a Vita and it was like, This is so small. You're right. This is yeah, so yeah. tiny. It's like when you pick up your old iPhone or something. You go back to the yeah. old uh, PSP, you're like, What is chunky bitch? Yeah. Jesus, look at this thing. But at least it didn't feel as cheap as that. True, uh, true. Tablet, man. Uh number two. 
was one that was just starting to pop off when I put it on the Roper Report. You yeah. said people on the internet are mad about it Top now, Top of Reddit too. games right now, my friends. Wee! Four is a seven has loot boxes, and Sam from Ars Technica is mad. He put up a spirited rant that I encourage everyone to go read there, detailing, obviously, what's wrong with loot boxes, what's happening in Forza, and then uh, more of it. So here we're just going to jump into the middle of the article, read for a little bit, and then p- p- pal out. Previous Forza Motorsport games have let fans trade real money for virtual CR coins, mm. which are also easily earned in races. Those coins can be spent to purchase new virtual cars for your garage. Should you no longer want a specific car, you can auction it off to other real players, and they'll send you some of their own CR coins in exchange. Forza 7 adds the new option to spend CR coins on loot boxes, which Turn 10 has renamed Prize Crates. Forza's boxes come in a variety of names and CR costs. At the low end of the spectrum, the basic mods crate costs 20,000 CR, an amount that can be earned by completing two standard Forza 7 races. On the higher end of the spectrum, you can buy the Elite Mixed Crate for 150,000 CR, or pony up as much as 300,000 for limited time Lucky Car Crate. Let me be clear. As of press time, Forza Motorsport 7 does not let you pay real money for its CR coins or for its loot boxes, but that will almost certainly change. Turn 10 confirmed its plans in a statement to Ars Technica. Quote, once we confirm that the game economy is balanced is balanced and fun for our players out in the wild, we plan to offer tokens, a real money currency that works like CR, as a matter of player choice. Some players appreciate using tokens as a way of gaining immediate access to content that may take many hours to acquire in normal course of play. There will also be an option within the in-game menu to turn off tokens entirely. That being said, this is the end, that was the end of the quote. That being said, the following criticism apply to Forza 7's mm-hmm. loot box even without them being attached to real world economy. Much like other in-game loot boxes, those in Forza 7 unlock random in-game cars and cosmetic items, and I'll get to those, he says, Mm. but Forza 7 adds a peculiar and arguably non-essential twist to the loot box's random contents through a new item called a mod. Mm. That might sound like an item that will modify a car to enhance its performance, but it actually modifies the circumstances of the next race and consequently the amount of CR you can earn in that race. Apply a night race mod to your car before a race, for example, and you'll turn your next race from day to night and earn 30% more CR on that race. An instability mod turns off the game's driver assist perks in exchange for a 30% CR boost. Mm. Some mods don't count unless you complete an objective like pulling off two perfect turns in a race. Other mods simply grant a flat CR reward boost in your next race without additional requirements. Changing the difficulty or terms of a single pl- single race in exchange for higher CR payout will sound familiar to Forza fans because this used to simply be a standard thing you could do whenever you wanted. Mm. Players could manually add or remove certain assists like driving line marks marks or where where you should accelerate oh sorry driving line marks of where you should accelerate and brake and get more cr per race for having fewer assists that's no longer the case you can still adjust the assists as you see fit but you won't be rewarded for doing so unless you have the right mod in your inventory turn 10 mm-hmm. has taken away a solid quote play play how you want for more cr system in order to have a new more marketable loot box gimmick But Forza's mods, which can only be earned in loot boxes, are primarily just another way for players to shuffle their CR coins around. The loot box system encourages players to dump their stacks of CR into the loot box economy in order to earn more CR. Spend CR to make CR. That's just good business. Sam goes on to Hmm. to continue. He talked about those cosmetic items. The thing about it is going on that this time around, you can change how your driver looks is what it turns out to be. And you can right. go, if even this sounds a little like destiny in terms of if you want this one outfit, mm. you can't just get it on its own. You have to spend CR on the loot boxes and hope you get that yeah. outfit out of that costume. Yeah. How's all this strike you, Danny? It's, we're reaching like the, the tipping point on this stuff, I think. And I think the reaction to, um, Shadow of War yeah. was emblematic, I think, of the way in which gamers are going to react to this sort of stuff, essentially infecting games that were previously immune to it. Mm-hmm. Um, we've this the idea of like having some sort of random element in the game has existed in free to play stuff, and there's sort of this understanding that okay, I'm getting this game for free, and that's just the way that sure, kind that's of how thing they make works, money. right? Totally, especially games where you're repeating the same action over and over again. Also, that makes sense to have it in, for instance, in Rocket League. Um, I think the Rocket League boxes, and I put my hands up, I've probably spent me 20 bucks on them in the 400 hours I've played a Rocket League over the past couple of years. Um, the drop rates in those are absolutely, utterly fucking abysmal. 
terrible. I've rarely gotten anything of worth out of a, of a loot box that I've had to buy the thing for. Same as would be said for player unknowns battlegrounds, the exact sure. same thing. So this sort of stuff is like it's targeted at people to play the game a lot, and quite simply, it is a way for them to make additional money. I have never, it's kind of funny, like on forward slash you're wrong if I'm wrong. I have never seen a loot box system introduced to a game that has made the game a more enjoyable play for the player. I have seen it that has helped to create an economy in which that game can continue to exist, perhaps, in terms of free-to-play stuff. But when we're getting into, like, first-party games, which are funded by fucking Microsoft, that are then employing this sort of stuff at the expense of... Like, I'm not even a huge Forza player, but one of my favorite things about that game was the fact that you could get more credit, essentially, for playing the game without assists. And that risk-reward was, like, the loop of the game for me. Like, sure. I understood that in the same way that, like, the risk-reward of Burnout was always driving close to other cars, which you didn't necessarily need to do. That's what a driving game needs. So then, like, essentially nerfing that whole aspect by putting in a loot box system, which is, like... I just... What I hate more than anything about this sort of stuff, and it sort of applies to the whole, like... A couple of things that are happening at the moment, and like the way that the Fortnite Battle Royale stuff is happening, and the way in which the Shadow of War stuff is happening, NBA and the way that like 18. yeah, NBA Two K eighteen, the the ways in which these companies are trying to like like we know what your fucking end goal is. We know at the end of this, you're just going to like monetize that and make it so that you can buy this sort of stuff. Yeah. And the fact that you're like toe dipping into it is like trying to make it look like you're not doing the skeezy thing you're doing, but you're doing the skeezy thing. You're just doing it slowly and hoping no one will notice. And we are noticing, and this Ars Technica um, article is a really good you know, like highlighting of how this actually affects these types of communities. Uh, I'd be very interested to hear what Forza like sort of diehards think about it. What were you seeing online? Because I came out and I was like, did I miss anything during the morning show? You were just talking about like, oh, people are mad about this. Reddit games are on it, but I feel like the majority of the people on that are just like general sort of game players like, like you and I. Sure. Um, they seem to be not very happy about the whole modding thing in particular. Gotcha. Because that is something that is... Taking away, what's, taking I mean, away. As, as an outsider on the sidelines who does not play Forza games uh, and can never pronounce the word correctly... Mm. Uh, uh, it seems like you're taking away a pretty in integral part of that game. Yeah. Of like what you're talking about of like, yeah, I'd want that modifier there and I'd want to be able to do it without having it in. The it's always that thing of change always is met. No, no one likes change. Right. Ever. Right. I don't like you leaving. People don't right. like change. Uh, when we change something for kind of funny, people usually don't like it because they're used to something and that's what they expect from for it. For sure. And so this is what you're talking about, of like dipping your toes in of like, we got to take this lump sometimes or at some point we're going to have to do this if we want to go down this path. So right. why not do it here and just take our lumps while everyone else is taking lumps that getting in here? Yeah. And is it really going to stop people from playing? And it's one of those when it's a gradual, slow progression by the time we get three Forzas from now, right, and you are being nickel and dime for everything, and again, that's worst case scenario. That's yeah. uh, you know yelling fire in a crowded theater. People right. won't be able to be like, well, remember five years ago when we played these games, six to ten years ago, and we played this and got that for free. We didn't yeah. have to do this. Right, the frog's being boiled, and we saw it with DLC before, right? I, I hate that analogy as well because it's not actually true, but it works in this case. But it, we saw it with DLC as well, and we saw it in the way DLC basically like it got rid of cheat codes. Like in yeah. a way, we had all the a lot of this stuff before, but now we 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 don't. And uh, DLC, at least, I feel like we've gotten to the point now where a lot of DLC is actually like pretty good quality, yeah, uh, or bigger in scope than it was before. The days of horse armor, thank you. That's, that's the concern. I mean. The last couple of weeks, it seems microtransactions and loot boxes have come up so much on this show in a variety of different games. I still believe that, and I think and with NBA 2K18 is a great example of everyone universally is like, this is broken. This is fucking stupid. What right, are you yeah. doing? I still believe that the market will correct itself. Hmm. That NBA, the people, 2K isn't going to put out NBA 2K19 and do the exact same thing and the exact same choices. Right. And I don't think, I mean, they already lowered the price of haircuts or whatever in NBA 2K18. <laughs> like, it is that thing of you need to respond uh, and that you can't sit there and just be like, well, it's making money. Let's let it roll. Right. If people are furious about it, then it's going to start eroding the fan base. It's going to t take the fun out of it. It's going to be in every review. And so I feel like when people like Sam who are calling this out and putting it in a, a well-worded article that's, again, fascinating. You should go read it at Ars Technica. It's just the fact of, like, that's what we need. People need to be vocal about it. You need to vote with your wallet. You need to do all these different things. Mm. And that's the big thing is I feel like if you don't buy the loot boxes, they won't happen. But then it's like... Uh, but, and that, but that's me being perhaps too lenient because I know right. I, I feel like in the, when we have these things I'm always like well they don't really affect me like I know those deaths I don't spend the silver on the destiny and I'm having fun playing yeah. destiny so what's the big deal but it is then the counterbalance of that of like James Sterling who's like you gotta fucking stop them now you gotta right. you gotta fucking be right here to say no toe the line and there's an argument to that mm. of 
I don't know where the balance is. I hope the market could fix itself because it, we've seen it with DLC, right? Where it was like, hey, DLC and this and the real ending of Prince of Persia. And everyone's like, fuck right. you. Like, you know what I mean? I'm like, okay, let's figure out a different way to do this and let's balance it back out. Yeah. In the same way that, hey, we have a great single player game and we're going to tack on a multiplayer mode. Right. And everybody's like, that's stupid. We hate that. Stop doing that. And people stop doing it. Yeah. But it is the concern of, all right, cool. What if we 90% of us band together and say that, but then there is this 10% that are the whales that are like, no, no, I'm going to pay. Right, you pay this stuff over and over again, and then they start making money, and they balance it out, and it's this profit margin over that, and then how does it all work out? Or we're the ten percent talking about it vocally, and everyone else is the pool of people who, like, let's say, ten percent of them do it. Yeah, that makes enough money to, that it's worthwhile. Yeah, uh, my problem with this is that, like, I'm totally with you, and that I feel like. One of the things I love about the gaming community is that we tend to be sort of like on people's asses about this sort of shit. Yeah. Um, but I do think that outside of that whole like element of it and the fact that gamers do have the, the ears of like developers and PR people are quite a lot, I do think there's like this draining effect that happens where, take Call of Duty for a good example, right? Call of Duty is a game where like the single player campaigns have been interesting and fun. Or they've been all right, but they're like they've they've been less and less interesting as time's gone on and less and less, they've some have took risks and stuff, but like gone are the days of modern warfare fair and call of duty one and two and like where things were like really incredible and amazing and it was like lots of evolution and it's multiplayer and stuff like that the reason for that is they have an amazing business model right now yeah. the games might not sell as much as they did but the money they make off in-game stuff from multiplayer is fucking killing it yeah. they have no reason to rock the boat on that and when you look at that on a balance sheet what are activision gonna say they're not they're gonna say let's reinvent the wheel let's do all that they're gonna say let's do the same thing we did last year and change it a little bit and that is the same reason that i feel weird a little bit about destiny when activision said we're going to have this 10-year plan like sure. to me that felt like don't talk to me as if I'm a part of your 10-year plan, right? Yeah. And then to make a game which is essentially about a DLC loop, which is they made a game where it's amazing, you play it for a couple of months, you wipe out all the content, and they make another piece of content, and you buy that one. And it's like, like I get it, it's a good game, it's fun or whatever, and like designers will always try and make a game that's fun, and that's what they want to do. But when it comes to big companies like that, at the end of the day, they have their the, the publisher side of that conversation is all about trying to sell stuff. Yep. And that's what's happening here. And you're talking about a, a software division, a first-party game, Game for a hardware manufacturer. This is supposed to be a game that's supposed to like sell units of the console, and even they're doing it. Like r that's a drop in the bucket, surely for Microsoft as a whole thing. Maybe Forza itself's not selling that well, and that's what they need to do to justify themselves. I don't know. Like Turn Ten are an amazing studio. Those games are awesome. Horizon's awesome. This stuff just leaves a bad taste in my sure. mouth. It just sucks. But I, and I think that's the thing where. You can look at this, though, and then extrapolate from it. Okay, well, like, Activision, right? What is their public perception? You know what mm. I mean? In terms of, like, what people think of Activision as a video game publisher. They think of, they're out to make money. They are a business. Right. And you accept it at that fact. I think the fact for, even if Forza goes down a dark path, there's always going to be Project Cars. There's always going to be this other game that's like, no, we're doing it the way fans want. Where right. We can succeed where other people have failed. We can make the game. There's always, always, always going to be a CD Project Red. Right, because like, guess what? It's all fucking free. Here's the yeah. here's a thank you letter in the box. You totally, know what I mean, where yeah, it's yeah. like, and that speaks louder, I think, than this. Yeah, where it is that thing of like, you know, Sam's article is talking about like Overwatch and their loot crate system and this, that, and the other, and it's right. like all games that I wouldn't give the time of day to just because they're not for me. And so when those start crossing over into the games I care about, it is a thing of like, well, do I care enough? Does it matter? Do I want to spend the money on it? And like mm. Destiny, which I care a lot about. No, I don't want to spend money on this. I'm getting enough shaders. I don't care if I'm miscolored. I think it's a dumb thing. And I'll tell you, I think it's dumb how you're handling it, but whatever. And you hope that that data then influences another decision. To right. Learn. It's, I, th I think it's just disappointing when it happens from company and I'd say the same about the loot boxes in Overwatch as well where you're thinking come on Blizzard man your bread is buttered like, yeah. like and uh, the problem with that stuff is the, the, the DLC stuff they have is so good that you like you know, the loot box stuff that you want it uh, terrible drops off that as well we did a video on GameSpot where I we bought $50 worth of packs and got like sweet fuck all from it nice. uh, but like Forza man Dan Greenwald and those guys they make they, they care about cars right yeah. and like the folks making Middle Earth Shadow of War they you talk to those guys they are the most passionate developers in the it, world. Yeah. I just hate that everyone keeps getting... They they keep... When things are... You know when things are cool? Like, it's hard to, like, say when th when a thing is cool. The CD Projekt has that thing, right? Yeah. Where people are, like... People are behind them. Yeah. They're like, yeah, we're fighting for you. And a lot of these companies... I feel like Forza has a lot of goodwill. Oh, I yeah. feel like Shadow Wars has a lot of goodwill. And they are... 
it maybe there's no dollar amount on it, but they are throwing that shit out the window, and you can't get that back. And you have to imagine that's coming from the publisher side, right? Has that's to be. WB saying to the guys, "Hey, you're making a great Lord of the Rings game, awesome." Tol- or, uh, sorry, and Tolkien fans, a great Tolkien <laughs> game. Hey, you know, put this in there, put it in a loot box. This is what we've seen. Can you make that work? How would you make it work? Right. What does it look like to you? You have to imagine that. Yeah. And then what the worst part of it is, who who's at the end Develop. of the email turn 10, turn 10, having turn to talk 10. about it? Yeah, yeah. I know. So, I, I to me, loot boxes totally benefits one group of people in the equation of video games that involves developers, players, publishers, the whole shebang. And yeah, I, I hate I hate it going into games like this. Gamers want control. Yeah. Pro, you know, they look, especially car game, it's all about like mixing it up. So when you take that away, they're going to revolt. And they should. Number three on the Roper Report, mm. it's Danny's last PUBG dump. <laughs> Two PUBG stories for you here, Danny. First, a press release. Blue Hole Incorporated announced today a change to it's, its never weird. It's never not weird. Blue, Blue hole, hole. Well, every time. That's what they're doing to get away from mm-hmm. it now. Uh, announced today a change in its organizational structure with the formation of PUBG Corp, a subsidiary focused entirely on the development and global business opportunities for player unknowns battlegrounds. Parentheses, PUBG. So it's taking a bunch of the people <laughs> from, Pu- from Blue Hole, including... Uh, Chang Han Kim, who was the chief executive officer, mm. uh, he was the one who's been was the guy of like, no, oh, what the fuck, Fortnite, we don't yeah. want you around, <laughs> like that. that <laughs> We're happens. gonna sue you. Uh, all these different people though, pulling over these different people, including uh, CEOs from a bunch of businesses you've never heard of, or at least I haven't. So, they won't. but basically, they're going out and they're spinning out PUBG into its own corporation here. So it's, right. we no longer have to sit here and talk about Blue Hole every time something happens. Yeah. Given this is uh, Kim, by the way, given Player Unknown's battleground, g- Player Unknown's battlegrounds global success. We want to ensure that we have the operational efficiency that is required to support the game globally. This new structure allows us to be nimble as we look towards the expansion of strategic business opportunities that include the game's potential in esports in the esports sector and the growth of PUBG as a true global IP franchise. As part of its international expansion, PUBG Corp has recently established an office in the United States and is preparing to do the same in Europe and Japan. This expansion will allow for more centralized points of contact for players around the world, ensuring that development for Player Unknown's Battlegrounds continues to be a global in its nature. Player Unknown's Battlegrounds has sold more than 13 million copies Jeez. and has surpassed the all-time record for most concurrent users on Steam with over 1.5 million active players in the game at a given time. Take that, Dota. Take that, Dota. What do you take away from this? So we uh, you stop saying Blue Hole? Stop saying Blue Hole. Uh, all the people are still holding on to the acronym PUB, which makes more sense because Battlegrounds is one word. Mm-hmm. Uh, they can go fuck themselves because now it's official. PUBG Corp? It's PUBG. PUBG Corp. I want a t-shirt with PUBG Corp on it. Yeah. It's about the stupidest thing I've ever heard. They, I and the thing was like, do you want to see our new logo? I'm like, I don't need to see the logo for PUBG Corp. But it's there if you want to see. I got it in my email. <laughs> <a> frying pan. <laughs> 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 Chicken dinner. A chicken dinner. That'd be pretty, yeah, just like a chicken with like air, heat waves coming. Yeah, 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 yeah. Uh, yeah I mean, it, 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 I'm, this makes, like, what are, what's Blue Hole's other game? Exactly, <laughs> right? right? Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. This makes total sense. Um, yeah, they, they, I think they opened up their, I feel like the office was in, it's in Michigan or something? Is I, it, I don't yeah. know. I missed the thing. It's opened about it. two months ago, I think. Okay, well, yeah, I missed so. that. I missed that. Uh, meanwhile, Bloomberg had another piece about Player Unknown himself and the game and all that stuff. There mm. was an interesting uh, part of that I'm pulling out for you. Uh, this is Chang, but I think he's I think it's Kim because Chang is his first word, which is a weird thing if Bloomberg did that. But mm. Bloomberg says Chang. I'll stick with that. Says his company has had talks with all of the major console companies about bringing PUBG to, to a broader audience. Microsoft Corporation will launch the title exclusively on Xbox later this year. Blue Hole is in talks with Sony about introducing a version for the PlayStation after that. Mm. So... That's been a will they, won't they. Of course they will. Maybe they won't. Here's a weird rumor. Here's not. Yeah. Bloomberg says it's officially happening. So there you go. Cool. Meanwhile, Ryan Reed writes into Kind of Funny Games Daily by writing into kindoffunny.com slash KFG. You're about to Ryan Reed is <laughs> I'm going to write and read his question. <laughs> Console exclusivity doesn't matter. He's pulling from the same Bloomberg article in there. Here's a ch- quote for you. I don't think anyone in the industry was expecting it, says Piers. Harding Rolls, head wow, of that games, guy rich and white. Yeah, I know, right? <laughs> head of games research at IHS Market. PUBG go. was arguably, ha, I'm sorry, PUBG has arguably risen to be Xbox's most important exclusive for the end of 2017, and that is something I doubt Microsoft expected. God, that's true. That's so sad. Back to Ryan Reed. The above quote struck me as odd. PUBG being viewed as Xbox's most important exclusive this year. I can say that this year's E3 made me jump on the mic into the Microsoft family and purchased my very first Xbox. I purchased an Xbox One S model for one reason, angry Greg voice, the genius Microsoft message, Xbox One launch exclusive. 
I hastily purchased the console because I had to ensure I got on that PUBG action. It wasn't until I watched your kind of funny Microsoft Reacts video that I realized I had been duped. So, Greg, <laughs> do you think it is possible that we will start to see companies like Sony and Microsoft try to throw money at a developer in order to have their behemoth of a game on the box first, in order to get the praised <laughs> exclusive title? I am excitedly awaiting the announcement date for PUBG on Xbox for the end of this year, but I'm also nervously awaiting news of the PS4 version as well. Thank you for being an ama- amazing hosts and co-hosts uh, and a virtual friend. Keep up the great work. The fucking... The, the circular world of video games. I feel so bad. I, I did not realize Ryan Reed was in a coma leading up to E3 <laughs> and right. apparently had been there for decades. Right. And uh, Ryan, there's no, what do you mean? Like, well, am I worried that this is going to be the thing that the, uh, do you think it is possible to start to see companies like Sony Microsoft try to throw money at a developer in order? Where have you been? That happens all the time. It used to happen. I feel like it more, more for sure. Like, like maybe the, so well, uh, when those, you, you think it's like the Matrix. We're, we're a just repeating bit. the cycle. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay. Yeah. Neo's just woken up again. I mean, Tomb Raider on Xbox. Sure. I mean, you go right. back to I mean, Resident Evil on Nintendo, Resident Evil 4. Like, yeah, this isn't unheard of by any stretch of the imagination. I no. think now. Final uh, Fantasy. And- I, I, you know, I think I always use the example of Play Dead with Limbo and then their second game that I can never remember the fucking name of. Sequel, to, not the sequel. Play Dead. They I made literally Limbo. have the picture of it in my head right now. Oh, of course, I can envision yeah. it running away. You got worms on your heads. I understand what we're talking about. <laughs> then uh, you, <laughs> get, you get, get over there. You know what happens at the end of it. <laughs> you get over there. Big old ball. Oh, meat. I forgot about that shit. Oh, yeah. That was good. It was Limbo, their second, second game from game. Play Sc- Dead. Scrolling the inside. Inside. I cannot remember that name for life of me. Yeah. Uh, the fact that Limbo was exclusive to Xbox as a console, a video game console, forever, right. and then finally came to PlayStation. And yeah. then they put out Inside, and like literally a month later, they're like, it's coming to PlayStation for next month, don't worry. It was like, oh, thank God. That's be- it's weird. It's like in a very short period of time, it's, be- it's become utterly uncommon for that stuff to be the case anymore right big game or small so it does seem a little bit like i totally get that it like now like if you just say four months ago it was coming out on xbox one exclusively it's like oh that makes around e3 like the game had been out like two months but it really only been blown up about a month so yeah. like it was like oh that makes sense that's cool but like now that the game has sold 30 million copies basically the biggest game of the year uh, for a certain men and people right uh, like certainly top like two sure. three games of the year right in terms of like sales uh and playing like now it seems kind of yeah, like it is kind of weird that this probably is the biggest holiday exclusive. For 100%. I and I, you know, I he says it struck him as odd. It doesn't strike me as odd at all. It's what Microsoft has up its right. sleeve. It's all it's got. A great deal. Whoever struck that one, exactly. Fair play. And you have to imagine, like I imagine, I don't, we don't. Know uh, now PUBG Corp has got to be champing at the bit of just like, why? Do we, oh fuck, we got to get this thing out everywhere. We got to do this. Yeah, you can, you can, you can think about it a couple of different ways. You can think about it. the growth is so big on PC that whatever happens on consoles is great. Sure. Um, they also have the ability now to really like rally behind Microsoft fans mm-hmm. at this time and be yeah. like, this is coming out on Xbox. Like, get all those people involved. Like that, that, like my, I've said before, what Microsoft needs more than anything else is software that gets people excited in the way that like Gears of War 1 and 2 did man when everyone was playing that stuff yep. like if you yep. were on Xbox 360 you were no matter if you never played multiplayer games third person action games everyone was playing Gears of War sure PUBG I think will have the same effect on it and then what happens is six months later four months later they could do it all over again with uh, with PlayStation well the question I mean the thing Except about Rocket it, League you did. figure PlayStation to some extent has to be upset about this because hmm. I, I feel like you know yep. Ryan starts console exclusive it doesn't matter 100% yep. I'm going to turn on my Xbox and put in multiple hours of PUBG yep. on it and I don't turn on my Xbox often Who but knows, I get back in the ecosystem maybe buy another game yep. maybe change over maybe and maybe I get so invested in it that I'm like you know what I don't need to buy it on PlayStation 4 maybe by the time the PlayStation mm-hmm. 4 version gets around I'm like I've played enough PUBG I don't need to play it right. again here yeah. like there's a million different little things of that and I like, granted PlayStation has the install base. They're gonna the game will get there. It's gonna sell well. They're not really worried, but it does suck that they've lost this one battle. Not the war, but they've lost this battle of yeah. like, all right, cool. The biggest game going this year is going to show up on Xbox first. Yeah, and I'm happy to see it. Like I think in the like I'm this part of me that's really pulling for Microsoft that really wants to get them back yeah. in there because oh, yeah. I, I sort of believe in the post metric era that they've what they've created. I see this in the corner of my eye every fucking time. It's so weird. Look at uh, that. <laughs> So I think I've this is a good one very for serious conversations we've, we've had, had with these hats like on. Yeah, get, get those gifts out. It's too late. Uh, now. I gotta look yeah, crazy. Uh, I think it's cool if you're an Xbox fan, you want to get this stuff. Yeah. Hopefully it plays well. That's the last thing. Yeah, really. Because yep, yep. the con- c- c- con- controls on the PC for the pad aren't super great. I'm oh, sure they'll right. be here. I mean, I think that you know that's what uh, Player Unknown himself talked about in interviews before of right. like 
the reason they want to do this is because Microsoft's helping them and is actually involved in talking to them. Yeah. And it's, you know, for them coming to a console, they've got to make sure it works. Flawless. We interviewed them at PAX. That'll be up on NoClip Whoa. YouTube in the next next month or so. After my move. Gotcha. <laughs> Andy Cortez, we like the background. Good job. Great job, bro. Thank you. Amazing. It's like I'm back at my, my, my parents' place. Back on the Emerald Isle. You yeah. Know? You can just feel the wind hitting your Face. Yeah, so, yeah, yeah, it's yeah, shaking yeah. the barley and blowing my face. <laughs> Final sure. item on the Roper Report. This is a simple one from GameSpot. Destiny 2 is going to have some downtime next week. Mm. Server for PlayStation 4 and Xbox One are going offline Tuesday, October 3rd. At 8 a.m., you won't be able to sign in anymore. Then at 9 a.m., and this is all Pacific, all players will be removed from the game, even if you're in the middle of an activity, so plan accordingly. Mm. Maintenance is expected to end at noon Pacific time, but as you know, that could get pushed. It could be earlier. It could A million different things could happen. Yeah. Tuesday daytime. Unless you're in Europe, then it's an evening, but yeah, whatever. Whatever. That's a good time you know to mean? do it. Fuck it. Danny? Yes, sir. For the last time. Oh, my gosh. If I wanted to know what Don't was in the mom up. and grop digital shops, where would I go? Go to the official list of upcoming software as listed on each and every platform as listed by the Kind of Funny Games Daily Show hosts each and every week. Oh, Day. you're so close. Yeah, man. You've been trying stuff with the hat. It's almost there. Don't worry. Just there. Oh, well. Nailed it. You're letting your family down. <laughs> uh, out today. Oh, out today. Cuphead on Xbox One. Boo. Are you? Do you care? I played like maybe ten minutes of it this morning. Yeah. Looks great. Uh, seemed rudimentary from what I was playing, but apparently the boss fights get really hard. Yeah. So I don't know. It looks great. Pu- PUBG. Or, um, PUBG. Jesus Christ. <laughs> Cuphead from the beginning has been. <laughs> Could you imagine a hundred cups? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Pub- from the beginning with the Cuphead. Like, I've looked at it, I'm like, that game looks awesome. Right. Oh, it's bosses and platforming? I'm, I can't, uh, that's not my kind of game. Right. It's just not what I'm good at, nor do I want to get good at that. Yeah. So I see so many people today talking about, like, oh, I love it, but it's so hard. I'm like, yep. Right. Well, there you yeah. go. Enjoy yourself. We'll see. I'm a big Meat Boy fan, so I like mm. hard platformers, so we'll see. Battle Gorega. Rev 2016 is on Xbox One. Call of Duty World War II PC Open Beta is on PC. FIFA 18 is on PS4, Xbox One, Switch, and Woo! PC. FIFA on Switch! Vive the Switch! Are you, you gonna play it? You're excited? Fuck about yeah, it? I'm gonna play. I played it at E3. It was like one of the only games I played, and it like felt like FIFA on Switch. I'm gonna play a lot of FIFA on Switch for the next two weeks while we're in between houses. I bet. Yeah, that's, right, that's where you, it'll be the most helpful to you, right? For sure. You know what I'm gonna miss the most actually about this whole what show are you miss? is Xbox One game names on this list. They've been uh, every, out some gems lately. For every sure. time, Battle Gorega Rev 2016. I definitely 2016 put. <laughs> A FIFA question. Oh, really? On the dock for you. Oh, I put it in the Danny segment, maybe at the end okay. there. Huh? Is that where it is? Let me let me do a Control F here. Because there's a you FIFA sure question. Did. I got it right here. Read it out because it's for you. Duarte says, "Hey guys, trying to manage a FIFA question uh, before Danny's departure here. FIFA 18 came out today on all platforms, and I almost bought it for my PS4 until I saw it also come out on the Nintendo Switch, uh, and it seemed like a great fit for a football game. Nice work." Uh, do you, <laughs> says the guy wearing the fucking Raiders jersey, do you think some sort of cross-buy discount or cross-saving capabilities will ever be pushed forward? I want to know both. Thanks, and good luck, Danny boy. Thanks so much, uh, Dwight. Uh, no. No. Different, uh, that's like saying uh, buy it on Xbox, get it on PS4. Yeah. <laughs> if it was Vita, maybe. Yeah, well, no, they would have fucked but, that up too, like yeah. they obviously did. But no, that you're, you're SOL on that. Yeah. I don't see, I mean, who's taking the who's taking the price cut there? Totally. You exactly. Know, yeah, Somebody buy here, to. get half price. No. Encourage people to play over here. No, yeah. I don't want that. I don't. I'm PlayStation. I don't encourage anybody to go play on Nintendo. Totally. Yeah. Uh, hopefully it plays as good. I haven't seen reviews out. It seemed to be. It seemed to work totally fine when I played it myself. Nice. Great. Uh, five minute games, man. That's what the Switch is all about. It's five yeah. minute games that you can keep playing. Yeah. Um. You know that's what Zelda is a five minute game you can keep playing. Uh, and I think FIFA is the same thing. So. Same thing like Golf Story. Check that out. Totally. Yeah. Uh, Forza Motorsport Seven X- Motorsport Seven Ultimate Edition is on Xbox One and PC. I guess that's the like early access one. Right. Yeah. Gundam Versus oh, yeah. is on PlayStation Four. One Piece. Unlimited World Red Deluxe Editions on Switch. <laughs> Pharaonic, Pharaoh Nick, Deluxe Editions on PlayStation 4, Xbox One. The Super NES Classic Edition is out in stores. Ooh. Uh, the Girl and the Robot Deluxe Editions on PlayStation That's 4. Royks up song. Yokai Watch 2, Psychic Specters is on Nintendo 3DS. Uh, Black Day is on Steam Early Access. Super Mario Run gets Princess Daisy a new world and a new mode today in an update. And then Xbox One backwards compatibility adds support for Call of Duty, Advanced Warfare, Ooh. and Sonic Adventure. Ooh. <laughs> oh, you've been waiting for that one? Yeah. yeah Was okay. that out on, that came out on Xbox? No, it would, well, Sonic Adventure came out on Xbox 3, no. 
Sonic Adventure came out on Xbox 360. Yeah. Yeah, so this is the rematch. It came out in the Zebo. Oh my god. Who didn't love the Zebo? The Zebo. Yeah, Brazil's best console. It's everybody's favorite. You gotta yeah. go right there. You know, 3G you baby, know. I think. Was it? It was weird. Was it a 3G baby? It was like a, yeah. I don't know. Astro Scanlon, he's going to Brazil to do an episode of Cloth Map on Brazilian video game stuff. That kid's making too much money on Patreon. <laughs> Going to Brazil? <laughs> what are you talking about over there? <laughs> um, I want to start reader mail with some SNES info people have given right. us. But first, I need to tell you, it's brought to you by Lisa. <laughs> Whether you're upgrading your home, your health, or your state of mind, there's one surprising item that belongs on your shopping list. Yep. A mattress. A mattress. With over 10,000 five-star reviews, the Lisa mattress is in a league of its own when it comes to combining quality, innovation, and making a difference. The Lisa mattress is 100% American-made and delivered in a compressed box to your door. It's thoughtfully crafted with high-quality materials to create what Lisa calls their universal adaptive feel. Its three foam later layers provide support, pressure relief, and cooling that adapts to all body shapes, sizes, and sleeping styles. The Lisa mattress is easily... Is that your body shape? You're doing body right shape, there? baby. All lumps. Oh. It's like a wave form. Oh, the Lisa mattress <laughs> is easily ordered online and shipped free to your door within days. It's compressed in a box. It gets there. It's easy. I carried it up with Kevin Coelho. It was easy to carry. Then we send it home with Joey Noel. She sleeps on it all the time and she seems happier since then. She, she's sleeping. She's able to sit and stand perfectly. Exactly. Exactly. So that's so. It's, it's conforming to everyone's sizes and <laughs> body temperatures and Joey's fine. For an extra $100 off, go to lisa.com slash kind of funny and enter the promo code kind of funny, all one word. That's Lisa, L E E S sa.com slash kind of funny with the promo code kind of funny so danny yes sir let's talk about a tale of two snes classics okay we'll start with shredberg all right shredberg writes in and says hi greg and danny hey shredberg i wanted to write in about my positive snes oh. classic experience i like everyone else tried to pre-order but to no avail they went impossibly quick so i was determined to take the day off work to line up like I did so many times for Amiibo launches. However, because of work circumstances, I had to go into work today. Mm. On a whim, on my lunch break, I decided to drive down the street to Best Buy to see if maybe they had one. They had 20 left out of 55. Ooh. I walked in and out without ten, within 10 minutes and had one. I had 20 of them. <laughs> <laughs> the Walmart in town got 80. The Target got 122. The GameStop got 22. Wow. These stores got far more... I'm sorry. These stars got in far more than SNES. Any, I'm sorry. These stores got in far more than NES classics. Each ah. of these got ten or less. He says, and they received shipments of and more than they received shipments of switches. Wow. While some stores are already sold out, and the rest, and the rest by the time you will be reading this, this is still well more than the typical number of these types of Nintendo items. Nintendo made a ton of these units and is just going to store prior to the opening, guaranteed you a unit from what I've been seeing. While Nintendo. We'll have to make more shipments of this to keep their promise. It's a promising start for them, answering the shortest issue. Hmm. Thanks so much for everything, Danny. Good luck in Maryland. Thanks, Shredberg. Shredberg. Appreciate it. So Shredberg, a great experience. Yeah. Let's 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 rotate the the hash for this one. Brandon, oh, I thought I was going to stick, <laughs> writes in with a different experience. Uh, Greg and Danny. Firstly, thanks to Danny for a few great months with Kind of Funny Games Daily. Good luck moving forward. This isn't a question, but in case NES Classic stock issues are discussed, here's my experience from New York. Arrived at Best Buy about 30 minutes before opening. An employee came outside 10 minutes before opening to announce they no longer had tickets left, and if you didn't get one, no reason to stay. There was probably about 75 people in line. Ooh. I went across the street to GameStop. There was about 50 of us in line. Before they started selling, employees asked how many people pre-ordered, and one person raised their hand. <laughs> Employees said they only had 23 in additional stock and the reserve consoles were set aside. So they counted up to 23 and those people were able to purchase one. I'd say myself and more than half the people in line had to leave. Thanks, Reggie. Good call on telling us you stocked up. <laughs> Thankfully, I still get kind of funny games daily today. So thanks, Greg and Danny, for an awesome show. Brandon. Cheers. Brandon not having the same experience. No. I saw Gary Witta today venting online <laughs> that he couldn't buy one either. Where? I just Shredberg doesn't tell us what... The Missoula, Montana area of town he's living yeah. in that he's getting 122 to his target. A tale of two cities, my friend. Yeah, exactly. Like, right? if you're living out in the sticks where there aren't a million people who want to play buy video games, yeah, play you're Star doing Fox right. Too. Turns out if you live in New York or San Francisco, there's a lot of people who, who want to buy video it, games. You know what I mean? Yeah, yeah. yeah. I guess they just, like, I don't know why they send so many... <laughs> <laughs> to his neck of the woods, uh, but uh, that's that's awesome. I like I remember the case in my hometown of like they get t 
10 Wii's in, but there was only five people waiting outside the store, so yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. great. Whereas Thanks. if it was Dublin, they would have got maybe 20 in, but there would have been 30 people waiting outside. Um, it seems like they've done more. Uh, I, so I ordered... I've seen a lot of photos of people, like they go to the Target and it's just like wall to wall. Yeah. Uh, and uh, stuff's arriving as well. If people bought off, I bought one off Walmart. I think it was. Uh, it's arrived at my PO box. Yeah. Uh, I also got one off Amazon. I'd like try to uh, do belt and suspenders on it. Uh, it's not been shipped yet, mm. so I'm just gonna cancel that one. Somebody out. hit me up. I think in the Twitch chat today for the morning show talking about uh, Amazon orders were getting gutted for treasure orders or treasure bo- treasure box orders. I don't know what the hell that is, and I don't know if that's true, but right. that's something. There's a bunch of shenanigans out there right now. Treasure, but I wonder if that's some sort of a loot box thing that you do where they drop in hardware or I'm something. Just sh- I'm just know. shouting out things I've seen in chat, so I don't know if that's the <laughs> proper way of breaking news, but I'm just letting you know that. Seems like it's better, but people are still pretty fucking pissed yeah. off. It looks like if you want to get one of these by the holidays, you'll probably be able to figure yeah, it out. Yeah, that sounds about yeah. right. Maybe not today. Rory writes in and says, hey, Greg and Danny. Sad to see you go, Danny. I guess this is my final chance to ask. Hmm. What's the deal with the game industry in Ireland? Hmm. I'd love to have a career in this, but the biggest studio I found was an EA support studio in Galway. Do Galway. Got in power. I'm sorry. Oh, sorry about stupid. It. I'm sorry. It's only, yeah. Do you know any other studios? Also, what should I do? Move? Thanks for everything, Rory. <laughs> I wonder if Rory's in Ireland because it's a very Irish name. Sounds like he is. Yeah, so we'll have to see about that. Google um, Rory uh, in Ireland and see if anybody pops up. <laughs> I'm pretty sure Amy Gills is from Galway as well. You should be able to oh. pronounce that properly. I think she is. I'm sorry, Amy, if you're not. I know she's West Coast anyway. West Coast, bye. The best coast. Um, <laughs> cool, Greg. Cool, yep. cool, Greg. Sure. represents the West Coast. No Regardless. Yeah, he's yeah. He's <laughs> country agnostic. Um, uh, there are a bunch of game studios. It's a lot different to... It's like, there are big ones. Uh, EA has a support place out west, but if you want to like get into like actual like games development scene there, I would look up Immert. Um, I-M-I-R-T. It's Irish for play. Um, okay. It's like the Irish... Um, Game Makers uh, Union Association, basically. Immerse.ie. Uh, go on there. They have lists of all the companies that are based in Ireland. Um, there's a big indie scene. They're sort of like part of that whole thing. Um, and there are other companies like Microsoft has a place in Sandyford uh, Industrial Estate, um, which does, I think, maybe some localization and QA stuff. Um, I'm trying to think. There's a lot of mobile game things as well. A lot of mobile game companies based in in, in Dublin, but I'm not sure in particular if that's what you're looking for. Uh, but uh, outside of, as far as I know, kind of find it come for slash you're wrong, outside of the, that Galway Centre that's <coughs> that's mostly a support, like it's a telephone call-in place, not even like a technical. Oh, wow. Yeah, okay, yeah. Yeah. Uh, for EA. Um, outside of that, and maybe there's one or two places in Cork, there's not really much else going on uh, ex- ex- outside of the Dublin uh, area. So move is what you're saying. Move, I mean, a lot of people that's the reason why there's so many Irish game developers in uh, England and and uh, America what what Immert is trying to do is essentially be like no stay like we are creating a culture of game development here um, there's like really good games have come out of Ireland like Guild of Dungeoneering which came out a couple of years back was like super popular okay. uh, The Little Acre which came out earlier this year cute, wonderful yeah. Uh, uh, yeah like point and click adventure game there's really good games being in Ireland Ireland is like a super video game heavy country we have the second highest percentage of like uh, like PlayStations per capita. It's like the only other country to bet us was Japan. We play games. It fucking rains a lot in Ireland, man. Yeah. People play games. Yeah. People love games. And they know how to talk about games. John Romero lives in Galway and is now making games there. So there you go. He's like, new. He's a new dad. Right. Go work for him. Go make uh, Gunman Taco Truck too, or or that Whatever. Kickstarter uh, shooter he was he was making. God of Steel writes in to kindoffunny.com slash kfgd just like you can and says it's Fallout's twentieth anniversary. <laughs> As a huge RPG fan, wow. I'm thankful. For all the series has done for us and the, and the genre. But playing 2015's Fallout 4, I realized something. Mm. Is it over for Fallout? Has it given us everything it had and now it has to recede back into the darkness? Did it evolve the genre when it first came out but struggles to keep up with today? Was Fallout 4 the last Fallout game to come out for a good while? Playing games like The Witcher 3, Dying Light, Horizon Zero Dawn, that do everything that Fallout does and more. It sure feels like it. Keep up the good work, boys, and goodbye, Danny. We'll miss you a lot. God of Steel. I'll see you in the chat. Thanks, man. I think it's going to be a while until you see Fallout 5 for sure. Yeah. I wouldn't be surprised if they did another thing where like somebody else used the engine and they made a Fallout for New Vegas right. idea. Not that thing, but I think they found a lot of success with that. Fallout 4, Fallout 3, Fallout New Vegas. I wouldn't put it past them to do it again, but then Bethesda is trying to be this studio of quality in mm. games they believe in and I don't know if they'd be super down to give away the engine to somebody else and have them make right. something off site and I also think they're the kind of studio that takes the shit to heart where Fallout 4 did come out 
and I played it in platinum and I enjoyed it, mm. but it didn't. I'm sure, it sold very well. It oh, it sold really well. Mm. It didn't resonate like Fallout Three did. It no. doesn't have that holy shit Vault One Hundred One vibe that Fallout Three did when it came mm. out, and everybody's like, "What the fuck is this? This is amazing." It's weird. I feel like because it's been uh, nine years since it was two thousand eight when Fallout Three came out, and I don't really consider the Fallout series now to be Fallout games. Like like the isometric Fallout games to me are very very different mm, mm -hmm. uh, to, to like what I consider Fallout to be is part of the evolution of. Uh, the Elder Scrolls series, the first-person role-playing sure. uh, uh, thing. So, like to me, it's 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 as much a Skyrim as it is Fallout. That I feel like both the Elder Scrolls, Elder Scrolls, and Fallout need their next evolution, yeah. whatever that is. I think what Fallout Four was trying to do was was go into the sort of what was going on with with Minecraft and whatnot in terms of like creation yep. uh, and modding, which was happening on that. Obviously, with Fallout Three um, and Skyrim, um, and I think there was some success to be found there. I know a lot of the Creator Club stuff is is still ba is back in the news again. People aren't very happy about all the the, the way in which paid mods is being rolled out but I think th they do need their new evolution I'm not sure what that looks like I think like there was a couple of years there man where like every game we were playing was getting more and more into the weeds of like very minute realism like mechanics that were like all about like the minutia of you interacting with the world sure. and I feel like we had a lot of that throughout the last generation that's kind of come to a halt like games like The Witcher I feel like The Witcher is amazing in terms of its like story and in terms of its world building Horizon I think is a good example of a game that's like really good in terms of its technical ability and also its combat uh, and the story as well but none of these games the first person perspective like Dying Light, less so as well. The first-person perspective allows you to get really into that world in a way that those third-person games are divorced from. And if ever there was a studio that was, like, making strides in that way, it was Bethesda. And what I'd like to see from whatever the next game is, Todd Howard's thing, I'd kind of like to see them break away and try a different thing and maybe get away from the shackles that they've put themselves in, where sure. Fallout now and, and the Elder Scrolls series have all of these pre-requirements that everyone needs from that series. It's like a Zelda or something. It's hard to reinvent something when there's so much expectation. Yeah. So I'd like to see them take that first-person role-playing thing, put it in a different universe, give Start it a go. Yeah, and then there's nothing stopping them applying that formula if it worked to those other franchises. And that's the thing, right, is that I mean, Fallout 3 was such a departure from the Fallout games before totally. it that I'd want... And Fallout 4 was not. Fallout 4 was... Yeah. You know, I remember it's a... If I think infamous, at least in the kind of funny community, of leading up to Fallout 4's release, Tim on the Games Cast asked Colin and me, like, you know, what what are you expecting from this? And I'm like, my base expectation is that this is Fallout 3 that's running on current gen hardware. Right. And I'm and I mean if I get that, I'll be happy enough. But I'll you know, and that's what I got. I got yeah. that exact same thing. And it was like, well, they added the building, it sucks, it's terrible. Right. They added in like I like the ability of like choosing my uh dialogue and then having her like uh, the theme of my dialogue and then having my character say yeah. a version of that like and I'm like all right that was cool but it's what you're talking about it was with this weird mix mash of like mm. Fallout 3 was very much boom you're behind your character you're first person in your character you're choosing your responses you're saying it in your head and your voice and all these right. different things where this one was like a thing where when you start doing cutaways it's looking and it is competing against the Witcher and all it's mm. it was a game like That's Connor true, yeah, said yeah. it was a game trapped right. in time right this yeah. is clearly they they buckled on and started making this game a long time ago and the industry changed by the time they released it yeah and it was fun and it was good but it just wasn't what Fallout 3 was. And this happens to any successful series. Grand Theft 100%. Auto, like that swap between GTA 2 and GTA 3, there'll, there'll never be a jump like that for that franchise again. But they found other ways to iterate it. Yeah. You know, like making the worlds bigger, making them more diverse, making multiple the characters. stories, multiple characters, yeah. exactly. Um, you know, Red Dead's in the same situation. It's hard to reinvent the wheel when people just want that old version, you know, fresher. We'll see, man. We'll so, see what they we'll give We'll see. Us. Yeah, fingers Red crossed. doesn't make good games. Too. Yeah, no. They're in there, in there, like I said, I think... They're a company that I believe I think does have a vision and does believe in art and does believe in like, hey, we want to make something really fucking cool. And they have a suite of games and a lot of like they've the top tier guys and a lot of their middle stuff hasn't necessarily sold super great this yeah. past year. Yeah, yeah. And they're hoping Wolfenstein will probably do do well for them again. But it's lost that underdog status it had the first time around. Yeah. So when it comes to like Fallout and and the Elder Scrolls series, they need to knock those out of the park. Uh, otherwise, it starts to look it takes its soul in the Bethesda name, you know. Yeah. So I'm, I'm that's why I'm confident that they'll always make good on those ones. Time for a new segment. Ooh, called Oh Danny Boy. Oh my gosh. Questions about you, Danny, on your final kind of funny games daily. Oh my gosh. Of course, you could have written in the kind of funny.com slash kfgd. One day, Danny will come back and be a guest host. When he does yeah, that, you totally. should write in again. Grant writes in, because I called on Wednesday for people's favorite memories. Aww. Grant writes in and says, My favorite memory of the Irish Cream was his amazing Game Over Greggy Show episode with Jared Petty. Episode <laughs> 182. That was fun. That 
in the three three or so times he bothered to show up for work at kind of funny games day. <laughs> always going around doing stuff no yeah, so much. You, that was a great game over Gregor Show. yes we talked a lot about uh faith yep in that one which is something uh, near and dear to both of our hearts uh, even if we're we're, we're, we're at, th- at this point in our lives we're at different stages sure. of that um but uh yeah, yeah, you, you you don't grow up in a country like this without having a thing or two. To, around, yeah. Yeah, yeah, totally. So that was that was a really I really enjoyed that a lot. Adam Walker right wrote in so to kindoffunny.com slash kfgd and says favorite Danny O'Dwyer moment contribution. <laughs> Hi, Greg and Danny. Following your request on Wednesday to submit favorite Danny moments, I wanted to throw mine into the pile. In one episode of Danny's series, Random Encounter, Danny played wow. Danny played Surgeon Simulator 2013. <laughs> the first time I watched it, I was crying with laughter, and it still makes me chuckle to this day. <laughs> Top moments, moments include Danny, after accidentally injecting himself with all the painkillers and going into a hallucination. <laughs> Let, quote, let's pull all the candy out of this man's belly belly. <laughs> <laughs> After losing the replacement lung for a patient, I have a list of lungs I hate, and you're at the top of it. <laughs> Highly recommend checking out this series, as I've been, and I've been a subscriber to No Clip since day one. You will be missed, and keep putting out amazing content. Also, Greg, you make my morning commute so much better. Thanks for all your work. Blah blah blah. Thank you so much. That's so kind. Random encounter was the most. That was when, like, God, we did that on Gamespot. Like, I did it every day of the week. Uh, at the same time, so five days a week I'd play a random game. Yeah. Some was like classic games, some was new games. And it was the most fun I ever had doing that stuff because we had it all set up in a room and I could just go in and do it. It was yeah. like easy to do. Yeah. And when I moved to GameSpot US, they never, we never set that up. And uh, I could try to do it forever and it just never, never happened. It's yeah. so like number one thing I do when I get to um, the East Coast is being able to actually have a dedicated, like you have a dedicated studio, to have a dedicated place where I can go stream. That'd be nice. um, and I brought it back with a thing called First Encounter, which were games that I'd never played before. Mm-hmm. But really, I think at this stage, CBS isn't going to sue me if I just fucking do random encounter again oh, so don't put I'd, it I'd, I'd kind of love to Ben Howard's over there waiting for you to fuck up and come he's down a good dude like I wouldn't be hammer. here if, if it wasn't for him ben, so. Ben's great I love Ben yeah. Nate McKinney wrote into kindoffunny.com slash kfgd and says good morning Greg and for the final time the Irish cream Danny I don't actually have a question just wanted to write in on Danny's last episode and wish him well Thanks. it's been great having you on kind of funny games daily parentheses all five episodes you were on <laughs> wiki face I can of course I added them up 22. Nice. All right, there you go. We just hit 69 yesterday, so not too shabby. Uh, I've enjoyed your humor and perspective, and like many best friends, I'm sad to see you go. Good luck in your future projects. I'm crazy hyped for the Witcher videos, and I can't wait to see what you do next. Wishing you all the best as always. Thanks for the great content. Nate McKinney. Gurvmila Mahagut, Nate. Thank you so much. Ginger writes in. Ginger. Ginger. The kind of funny dot com. The, the herb. Slash KFGD. Herb. I think hair because it goes ginger oh. dot dot dot, but not Irish. Okay. <laughs> Probably. The most important question Danny will receive today. Greg, simply say, shout, sing to Danny. A tournament, a tournament, a tournament. <laughs> of lies. Is that what it is? This is, yeah, it's our uh, podcast I do with two of my friends. It's been on hiatus for a good five months now. Okay. Uh, everyone's asking if we'll bring it back. Because he says he'll know the crack. I don't know what that is. And deliver crack? the stinger. C R A I C. Yeah. 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 What I'll is know that? the crack. I'll know what's going on. Yeah. Okay. Uh, it's yeah. The name is based on an old REM song. It's a it's a podcast where we rate every single video game ever. Oh, nice. Uh, so you can see the current list on a tournament of lies dot com. Um, which I, let me see. Let me let me give you the top ten, and we'll see what you think of our you list. You do so much stuff. I don't even know about. It. That's the thing. We like, and we haven't done this one in uh, uh, since before E three, um, because I had a bunch of like. It was just hard to like find time for all of us to do it, and then we started playing PUBG before. So we currently have a list of uh, the total number of games on the list. You can go to turnoflives.com and see it. It's literally a Google Doc. Um, is Duke Nukem Forever is at the bottom? Of course. Tony Hawk Pro Skater is in five, and I feel bad about the order 1886 being in 66. Um, but the top ten, okay, top ten games ever. Yeah. As listed by us, number ten, Uncharted two. Oh wow. Okay. Okay. Can't number- wait for Uncharted three to pop up here in the top nine. Shit. Then. I don't think it's come up yet. Super Meat Boy at nine. Super Mario World at eight. Mm-mm. Wow, okay. Wii Sports 7. I'll fuck you guys. <laughs> Mortal Kombat 2 at 6. Okay. Street Fighter 2 Turbo at 5. Fucking fight we got that one in the same fans. way. Golden Eye 4. Resident Evil 4 at 3. Okay. Deus Ex at 2. You guys are getting crazy. Rocket League at 1. Of course you are. Yeah. <laughs> that was that was the deal, right? When you signed on to do the no clip, they're like, right. well, we got to get to the top of the list. <laughs> uh, like a million people have just logged onto this Google Doc, is what I can see. Um, yeah, it's fun. So we, we we take like three games by email every week and then we we try and list them. But we haven't done it in a while. But if, if that's a cool I'd idea. like to bring it back. I like that a lot. It's, it's, this, it's one of the reasons I love doing the show was coming over and hanging out with my friends. Yeah. And that was a really good way for me. I have a friend in, in LA, James, and one of my best friends, Dennis, in, in Ireland, and we never get to talk to each other. And it was a really good way to like, 
get us all together sure. every week on Skype just chatting. Yeah, so yeah. Um, I'd love to bring it back, but I got to make sure, uh, set the pace up first and then we'll see. Well, good. Danny, I'm going to miss you. I'm going to miss you, Greg. I wish you weren't going, but I'm so proud of you. I'm happy. Go out there. That's what happens, Start right? A new life. Yeah, yeah, exactly. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Exactly. Life, life brings you places. Life brought me here. GameSpot brought me to the Bay Area. Yeah. And I found my wife and now I'm getting the fuck out. <laughs> <laughs> You're taking your plunder and exactly, escaping yeah. to the East Coast. Yeah. Well, no, thank you for helping out. And thanks for doing Kind of Funny Games Daily for so long with us. It's been, it's been great. a pleasure. It's been Word. awesome. It's been, it's honestly, like I've said, I know we've talked about this a little bit, but a, mm. a dream come true having you and Andrea come through for yeah. this. And the fact of like seeing Kind of Funny grow beyond the spare bedroom was crazy enough. Right. But then to be able to actually reach out to friends, but more importantly, colleagues in the industry we respect so much and want to work with, but know we'd never be able to hire full time. Right. right. To have you guys be able to come in and do this is pretty awesome. Awesome, and it's been an and awesome seventy days of right. doing it. <laughs> and I wouldn't, I wouldn't try and talk for Andrea, but like I, similarly, I'd say it is probably it's wonderful for us because it allows us to collaborate with people we like to collaborate it, yeah. while retaining that independence, which right. is so uh, important to, to both of our endeavors. So, yeah, well, yeah, um, and I mean that was our whole point, right? Is like you know, at, there's so many other people doing something similar to what we do on our own out there, Patreons right. or your own channels or YouTubes, being able awesome. to move that collaboration into this ring. Like we can't pay you a lot of money because we don't have it, but we want right. to pimp. Like you know, what I mean, like I think. It it, it was so touching that you guys came in and you know you came on stage at kind of funny live and like you were right. part of the family like in an, in an official way rather mm. than just a guest or a show i'd like to see you out there doing your thing to see andrea get announced as the nintendo world <laughs> right. championship host but the first thing they put on her is kind of funny games yeah, Daily. Yeah. i was like holy fuck that's awesome that's awesome yeah. uh, and i cannot say enough thanks to everyone in the the kind of funny community who has been like so supportive and so nice to me when we, when the minute i came up because like there was an element as well that i felt like i was coming in here and it was the two of us but there was an element of we were filling else someone else's oh, shoes sure, who, was, sure, sure, who was dearly loved. Yeah. And no one ever gave me shit about it. And no Good. one ever and I never tried to fill anyone else's shoes. Yeah. Um and and uh, hopefully uh people seem to have been super uh, cool with me being on the show and everyone's been really nice and uh, like I hope people keep tweeting me stuff and, and keep chatting to me. I'll be in I'm still a kind of funny games a Twitch sub. I'll still be Good. in the chat during the live show. So Good. Uh yeah yeah like I'm I said looking forward to being to, a fan again. When you, you know? come to San Francisco you gotta come on every totally time. Yeah, yeah and I will be that's Good. always everyone keeps saying like you're going away and I'm like places we'll see each other PlayStation Experience PAX E3 yeah, GDC yeah. like the every other week Ubisoft event where they want to fly somewhere yeah. from somewhere over I'll here I'll see you at Paris stuff. Games Week Greg no nope, won't be there I'm not going to do that I'm not going to do that <laughs> uh, it's been a pleasure uh, working with you Danny My thank pleasure. you so much for that oh my oh my Aww. Yeah. I got to work with Andy <laughs> I saw him in Austin we're going to miss you oh, I know thank you so much Thank you so much for my Irish hat. Wait, what? I'm going away too, Andy? It's gonna be sad as oh, go. no, oh, Andy. Go. No, I don't like that at all. Well, we usually do a handshake at the end, but let's do a Oh, hug. no, we're not, we're not done yet. I still have to do a whole rigmarole. I mean, I was going to say. Oh, yeah, you're wrong as well. Well, no, I mean, yeah, there's your wrong to do. And back I also want to point out that. And he's got to go back to Destiny. You know, we, th that was a, the most <laughs> sentimental moment we've ever had on Kind of Funny Games Daily. <laughs> so it's only fitting to tell you it was brought to you by Bombfell. <laughs> Thanks to Bombfell for sponsoring Danny Leaving. Bombfell is an <laughs> online personal styling service that men use to get the right clothes easy. Once you sign up online and complete a simple questionnaire, you are matched one-on-one -on -one with a dedicated personal stylist who handpicks every piece. Your stylist will email you a preview of their selections after which you'll have 48 hours to make any changes or even cancel altogether. You're in total control. Afterwards, Bombfell will ship you the selected clothes and you'll have seven days to decide and only pay for what you want to keep. Send back the rest Ooh. with free shipping both ways. Tim and I are both using it. I don't have to yeah. the thing for this. I'm not. You're not using it. I think you, you should. can look like me. I like it. Monday's outfit, of course, is a Bombfell outfit. I'm excited. <laughs> for the next one to get here uh it's cool it's easy i hate shopping all right I, yesterday for kevin's wedding i looked at i was like do i have to buy anything oh thank god i don't oh good you know what i mean i don't have to go to a store and get bummed around right. uh bomb feels great do it there we have a special offer just for listeners of this show for 25 dollars off your purchase first purchase you can go to bombfell.com slash kind of funny that's b-o-m-b-f-e-l-l.com slash kind of funny once again bombfell.com slash kind of funny 25 dollars off your first purchase thank you bombfell for letting me let you sponsor Danny going away. <laughs> Much obliged. Danny? Uh, we have uh, some your wrongs. This is at kindoffunny.com slash you're wrong. If you're watching live, help us set the record straight for everybody watching later on YouTube. My good friend, versus. Capitalist Pig, who looks like nobody else. He looks like himself. Capitalist Pig. Okay. My boy. A very lame Google translation says that a baker's dozen is a Barclair Dossain. That sounds like, Barclair does sound like baker. Is Dossain Dozen? Yeah. Yeah, that makes sense. That sounds right. I hate ball Claire does saying. Okay. Okay. It sounds a little bit like Simlish, but yeah. Sure. <laughs> That's all right. 
Uh, Danny, you're wrong about the NFL team in Maryland. The Redskins play in Maryland, and you're more than welcome to jump on a Redskins bandwagon. No one's going to jump on the... There is no Redskins bandwagon. I think they... Apparently, locals call them skins. Oh, yeah? And they don't... And also, the Democrats in D.C. don't call it... Um, what's the airport? Uh, Reagan. They call it... Uh, national or something what a bunch yeah, of idiots <laughs> can we not be like this <laughs> know, right? uh you're wrong for letting danny go to maryland actually yep, you're not i agree with that i'm one. happy for him and really hope he likes his new home um thank you so much uh apology uh with forza games i always spend no money on coins and have 15 million unused cr <laughs> so maybe it'll work out for that person um uh, la, 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 loot boxes. Sorry, there's quite a lot in here. But oh, no, no. A, a lot of it's nice, nice messages as well. So I'm trying to. Um, I'm reading them, but uh, I'll, uh, I'll I'll pass them on for this section. A correction for the article about Forza. Forza mods were introduced in Forza Six. In Forza Motorsport Six, the mods were broken into three categories: crew, dare, and boost. Uh, crew gave your vehicle a performance boost. A powertrain uh, engineer would grant 10% boost of power, 12% boost in braking. Uh, dare would add additional challenges to boost credits received, and boost would give you straight up bonus for completing the race. I do remember those. There were modifiers that you could add in that would that would make the car okay. better or worse or whatever. Um, it's a little bit. It, it seems like different this, though. Yeah, right? it's yeah, the yeah, same yeah. word, but like or mods and boosts. I think are like different things. But I, I see where it's coming from. There was overlap certainly okay. in, in that okay. respect. Um, and I think that Amy Gills and Sligo. I was wrong. Ah, oh. Schligock. The, I, the county. The only the county that has a sea border with the smallest. Uh, Smallest beach, some smallest l- amount of land on water that isn't landlocked. Okay. There's a piece of There's uh, some real Irish, I- Irish, for, uh, <laughs> Irish trivia for you. All right, cool. <laughs> that's uh, it. I think that's it. Ladies and gentlemen, this has been Kind of Funny Games Daily. Each and every weekday on a variety of platforms, we run you through the nerdy video game news you need to know about. Then we give you perspective, answer your questions, and hang out. Don't break the set on your final day, please. <laughs> if you like that, you can watch live on twitch.tv slash Kind of Funny Games. You can watch later on youtube.com slash Kind of Funny Games or listen on podcast services around the globe. Next week's different. Danny's doesn't work here anymore. Andrea's off on assignment. I'm going away for one part, but I think Monday is going to be me and Tim standing by for guest host, show hosts and things like that as we get going. But no, until next time, Danny, it's been my pleasure to work with you. <laughs>